Hello, in this video we want to demonstrate the methods of simulating uh, passing values through interfaces. So pretty much simulating interfaces and we'll concentrate on the proxy ports. So SysML has this logical port, proxy port, which is convenient to use for the simulation because the another port which is full port, it's mostly uh, uh, which has uh, implementation, so it is as a part of the system. So it is not uh, uh, so convenient to use as a simulation interface to access the system because it has its own properties, its own uh, behavior. In this case, with the proxy port, it is uh, common to use. Uh, but um, the problem here is that uh, how I will communicate those properties through proxy port. So I have uh, as you can see here, my system model, very simple, with uh, component A with properties, component B with properties, and I want that uh, those properties would travel here through this connector, as you can see in internal block diagram. And uh, so, yeah, so how to do it, you know, and uh, the most simple way is actually to use signal and send the signal from uh, one component to another component and carry properties with this signal. So this is the first method which will demonstrate that even call this a zero method because um, it is not a directly property pass but it's through the signal. But uh, we'll see later there are three more methods which are actually direct property value uh, pass uh, between uh, two components through port and uh, you will be able to use them uh, same easily as the signal pass. So first of all, how that signal works. So you have two behaviors, one behavior component A and another behavior component B. Component A behavior sends the signal uh, and you see, you see that signal has property via port on port, which should be the port which we are using uh, of this component A. And uh, we input through pins uh, values. So I use opaque action to input the values of the ports by name, right? Uh, of the uh, signal. Signal has the parameters. If I will go here to signal, you see that it has those parameters. So I get those values as the parameters of the signal. And that's it, you know. So once the signal travels here, I read those properties with accept event action. And accept event action passes those properties here through pins again, and uh, we get result. And accept event action should have uh, property set is not marshal to true. I suggest to set this property once you create accept event action and only when associated with signal that will help you to create those pins. Because if this property is false, which is by default, all the objects as a pin uh, values of the signal properties will be catched as a single object when the signal is received so you will not get them separately available so that's uh, that's not convenient uh, so um, at least uh, not the simplest situation so if we will uh, run this model again this is that model uh, let me simulate uh, and for simulation i'm using version 2021 x which will be available in february 2021 which has some animation and uh, enchanced so you can see here that uh, what values are traveling where so i see that three and six are traveling here so from component three and six the signal is traveling here i see that signal was carrying the values if i would move mouse over that moment and you see the properties get here and then cycle reads the those properties again you know so this is just pattern you know how to model that we would get you know again active uh, accept event action in the cycle to read those properties and you see like results uh, received uh, if i will change something uh, you know the signal uh, once it will be changed set with the new properties i will receive new results and i could improve increase animation so i will get new results here fast or oh, use no animation so it will be immediate see here okay so that's the first method now now it will be fun, right? So here we have uh, no ports interface. So uh, uh, no ports inheritance uh, method. So uh, uh, here we have a system with the two ports here. 
same situation, right? And you can use parametric diagram or internal block diagram, you see, to show flow properties of the port, enlarge the port, show flow properties, and use binding connector to input values. And then you use connector between ports. You don't even need to show those, you know, uh, here inside. Uh, you can just suppress it, you see, like, like this. Once those connectors are created, you can just use, like, regular reports, you know. That's it, you know. And then... Um, values will travel from here through this connector here and you can use this connector you know uh, connecting uh, multiple level, uh, multiple ports you know it could connect you know uh, some port in between you know and the values will be correctly passed through flow properties so let's run this model okay simulation run yes three six okay okay we see the result is traveling can you see like both properties traveled and then i will increasing here so with opaque action and sending gain you know five Eight. And you see that the uh, 2021X has uh, some enchantments, like we see value, we see dimming, we see the values on the part uh, with the values uh, here. This was not available before. Okay, so this is the convenient method, right? Really, it's convenient, right? Again, I could expand here. I could uh, show that. Uh, and uh, what happens here that we get the values in flow properties, then we use regular connector as you would, you would do, and then get results here. Now, okay, let's stop the simulation and go to the next. This this is actually interesting uh, how uh, you can use the um, uh, interface properties directly in the block. So you can inherit from the interface, which we are using uh, as a port type. When you inherit, you get those properties of interface and you can use them uh, to specify implementation of those properties. This is uh, what SysML allows to do and actually even suggests, and you get those properties available. So this is inheritance from interface block by your blocks, and that's how you get flow uh, one and flow two properties directly available here. So if you will enter something here in that property, this property will be transferred to this block and then you can read from those properties so here you can see here that uh, i'm uh, adding to flow one and flow two in behavior of component a directly right and reading here in behavior in the component b behavior from flow one and flow two and i repeat this read you know because if i want to add again you know i need to repeat that read right okay so let's run this model so select this guy run yes As you can see, now I see those flow properties as if they are my properties, right? Because it's of this inheritance, right? So I see three is traveling, six is traveling. So if I change something like to nine and nine, let's see. Okay. And again, I should have cycle here because this was ended so it should go in cycle also so i don't have cycle here so this goes in cycle this does not go in cycle that's why nothing happens but if i will update here i think this will uh, trigger that yeah so here you go so the flow property triggers that and goes here okay so that's the uh, one more method and then the last one ports inheritance enter definition so i don't need even behavior here so this is amazing method you inherit from this interface. You know, when you inherit, you can just hide in the diagram. But what next we do, because we inherit, we can redefine and assign and name this property as a custom property. So we redefine in our context, you see like A and B redefines those flow one and two, and A1 and B2 redefines them in the, this block. So to redefine, you go here, properties and uh, select this inherited property click redefine and then you can change name values and so on in your context so what happens now it directly passes them here we don't need behavior right so this is fantastic method right uh, it's okay select this guy 
run yes execute so if I will change something you see travels here and changes here travels here changes here only the changed one yeah so that's as it should be you know based on the the logic of parametric diagram right to change and so it is passing that through the connector okay so we did quick overview of the four different methods how to simulate the ports and pass the values through those interfaces um, which you model in proxy ports uh, first one was the signal uh, most common way to use it but then you also you can directly pass through the with help of the parametric diagram this one is not needed here it just increases the it just increases the values to demonstrate, right? But this is passes directly. Then for inherited interfaces, so you see the access to those properties directly. And then for inherited uh, interface, and plus they're defining those properties, then you don't even need the behavior to read from those properties and assign something you get automatically assigned. So this uh, we can consider as the part one of this topic. In part two, we'll do structured data pass through interface right so here we introduce the how to pass the data not structured just values and then later we'll talk about like messages which consist of uh, structured information okay so thank you for your time